TerraFlex's new JK High Steer system includes high steer knuckles, frame brace, and drag link flip kit, and of course our heavy duty steering kit. By draining the oil from the diff, we'll spare ourselves the gear lube oil spill mess when we remove the axle shafts. Use a 21 millimeter and loosen the drag link nut at the pitman arm. Don't remove it yet. It'll protect the threads and keep the link from dropping when it finally breaks loose. Now be careful beating on your steering gear. If you have trouble getting the tie rod to break loose, an additional hammer on the opposite side of the impact can be used as a means to reduce a little bit of stress on that steering box. Loosen the remaining 21 millimeter nuts on the drag link and tie rod and employ your now perfected hammer technique to pop them loose. Using a second hammer can be helpful to provide a bigger target and reduce collateral damage. First remove the tie rod, then the drag link. To remove our axle shafts, we'll need to start by removing the 21mm brake caliper bolts. Be careful not to damage the ABS line. Hang the calipers out of the way and remove the brake rotors. Loosen the three 12.13mm unit bearing bolts. As it turns out, these bolts make for a great bearing removal tool. Just be careful not to jack up the heads of the bolts. You will need to get a socket back on them to reinstall the bearing. If you have an air hammer, use it. With the unit bearing loose, remove the 5mm Allen holding the ABS sensor and remove the sensor. Completely remove the unit bearing and axle shaft assembly, but support that axle shaft, especially on the long side. As you remove the axle, damaging that inner axle seal will come back to haunt you. Remove the ball joint cotter pins. Now pay attention to the orientation of that ABS line bracket and remove it along with the ball joint nuts using a 22 millimeter. The lower ball joint will need an inch and an eighth along with your trusty hammer to break it loose. Or, you air hammer fans can make quick work of it. But just remember to leave the nut in place so that your foot doesn't wear that knuckle when it drops. Replace the knuckle with the new TerraFlex high steer knuckle and install the ball joint nuts. By the way, don't forget that ABS line bracket on that upper ball joint. Torque to 75 foot-pounds on the upper and 80 foot-pounds on the lower. Always go tighter if you need to align that cotter pin with the holes. While supporting the axle shaft, carefully reinstall the axle shaft and bearing assembly. Before bolting anything back together, reinstall that ABS sensor. Lock tight and secure the three unit bearing bolts. Reattach the ABS line to the mounting bracket and install the brake rotors.
Use a lug nut. It'll make it a little easier to install that brake caliper. Install the brake caliper using Loctite on the caliper bolts. Be careful not to damage the ABS wire. Transfer your steering stops from the original knuckle to the new high steer knuckles. Remove the 21 mm bolt from the upper or frame side of the track bar. Remove the two lower 18 mm steering box bolts. And install the track bar drop bracket. Just mark the areas that need to be welded. Loosely install the frame brace and passenger side bracket. Mark the area to be welded. With everything test fitted, remove the passenger side bracket and clean up the frame for welding using the paint marks as a guide. This bracket is weld on only, so clean off the paint thoroughly to ensure that there is no contamination in the weld. Remove the driver's side bracket and clean the paint off of all the marked areas as well. Prepare the brackets for welding by grinding off all of the powder coat around the areas that will be welded. The driver's side is primarily a bolt-on bracket, but it's good to partially weld it. Install the right side bracket with the two lower steering box bolts and Allen head bolt. Cut off any excess bolt sticking out to ensure it doesn't interfere with the sway bar. Install the driver's side frame brace into the upper hole. Sometimes it's a tight fit. The bracket may have to be widened slightly. Loosely attach the passenger side bracket to the other end of the frame brace. Raise the passenger side bracket and adjust it to fit. Make sure the bracket is tight against the frame. The bracket's position will be determined by the brace bar. Weld the frame bracket all the way around. and weld the driver's side bracket just enough to keep it from working loose. Paint all the areas where the metal has been exposed. Install your new heavy duty drag link and tighten the nuts. With the new high steer kit, the drag link will now mount from the top down Reinstall the track bar. The bolt hole may not line up with the track bar, 
we used a ratchet strap to aid in lining up the holes, or simply install the bolt with the Jeep on the ground. Tighten down all the bolts and the jam nut on the frame brace. Install the heavy duty tie rod and final tighten the nuts. With the installation of the new heavy duty tie rod and drag link complete, you'll still need to do a wheel alignment. You just gained over an inch and a half of tie rod ground clearance, braced your frame, beefed up your steering knuckles, and installed the most advanced drag link tie rod system on the market. We waited until the Jeep was on the ground and sitting at ride height before final tightening the track bar. Tightening any bushing with a suspension drooped out will add unnecessary load and shorten bushing life. 